Hi, and welcome to the November blog for uh, Model Collector. I have sitting beside me the very esteemed Graham Jones of Race Car Engineering, uh, an expert on just about everything racing. And my goodness, I often need his help when I'm reviewing models. Let me start very quickly with my model of the month. Um, it is Oscar Diecast's Volvo FH Low Loader in Chris Bennett livery. I picked it as model of the month because for £20 it's an astonishing piece of engineering. It's a lovely looking model. Um, this as you know extends fully out so you can actually put on even larger loads than you see here. But it's the fine details, the details around the back of the cab for instance, the exhaust stacks, the extra chain inside uh, this kind of little bin at the back here. Beautifully made and for £20 I just think it's fantastic, absolutely gorgeous. You couldn't spend better. Uh, moving on swiftly to uh, something which is very much uh, Graham knows about, which is this Minardi. I'm going to let Graham tell you about it. There you go, Graham. Thanks, Tom. Um, yes, I have to say I was uh, really amazed that, that um, Many Champs has produced this particular model. Um, having been involved with Minardi, um, for the five years when Paul Stoddart was in charge of the team and running alongside the Formula One team was the F1 two-seater program. This car relates to an exceptionally private test um, which took place. Um, I know because I was involved in, in sorting out the cars and, and a lot of the planning for it. Uh, obviously it can be talked about now I think, a squirt seems to have got out, but at the time it was uh, absolutely, we were all sworn to secrecy about it. Um, what it involved was um, preparing a car to run at Fira Ferrari's test track at Fiorano. Um, it was to have no livery on it. It was specially resprayed in Ferrari red, in their particular shade of red. The driver on this occasion was none other than Michael Schumacher. Um, and the, the whole program was actually at the request of, of, uh, of Ferrari. Um, and Paul made one of the two seizures available. A uh, crew went out there. I think from memory we were on the way out to the um, San Marino Grand Prix right. at Imola. Um, and Michael spent the entire day taking many high-powered people from Ferrari, guests, sponsors. And Mrs. And Schumacher, yes. And Mrs. <laughs> Schumacher, Corinna, uh, around for rides, uh, two-seater rides. Um, and I do remember Paul uh, saying that it was one of the most amazing rides that he'd ever had. He didn't like passengering in the cars, but there's apparently one particular brick wall at the bridge at right. Fiorano where the track crosses over. Um, and he said that Michael was coming within millimeters of that brick wall every single <coughs> lap. Quite an amazing thing. So the car is unusual for the fact that it is completely um, void of any decals, any kind of sponsorship. Um, and it's actually in line with the other ones yes. that, that many champs have produced. Um, I've got a couple of them actually because they have a sort of special yeah. meaning for me. But uh, said this one is interesting because it was just done in the in the completely sponsorless livery and in this red. The only thing I would say in terms of the model itself, looking at it, something we discussed yeah. the other day, I think they've laid the paint on a little bit heavily um, to the point where sort of some of the details, like the side hatch for the battery and so forth and the, the brakes for the engine cover and so on don't actually show up so well. The paint's yeah. actually got into them. But um, I think, as I said for me, uh, as a model of something which has a particular meaning and, and as a very special one-off yeah. program, I would say this is a yeah. very, very collectible model. Yeah, and it's a very limited edition of 1,272. Uh, it's 39.99 as the recommended retail price. I have a feeling it, uh, with the association of Michael Schumacher, which you now know, because I'm not, in fact, it doesn't say anything on it. No. It doesn't mention Ferrari, it doesn't mention Michael Schumacher. So it's one of these kind of models that they sneak out for those in the know. As you know, Ferrari models, certainly the, the more or less current F1 models and Ferrari models, are all uh, mostly uh, licensed by Hot Wheels. So for many champs to bring it out, of course, it's a perfect one because it's kind of a little bit sneaky, a little bit naughty, but it's going to sell. It's going to sell fast. Graham, I'm going to move on to another racing model, um, one that my father would have known because he was uh, a great fan of Nuvolari, Katia Nuvolari, the great Grand Prix racer uh, pre-war, one of the great Grand Prix racers. This is the D-Type, they've also brought out the C-Type, Auto Union, C-Type and D-Type. This is the D-Type uh, Grand Prix racer. It is astonishingly good. 
Um, I'm just going to check on the price while I'm here. Always, always bought. It's thirty-nine pounds ninety-nine. Uh, limited edition of one thousand four hundred and eighty-eight pieces. They've done uh, a fantastic job with the interior. Even the seat, as you can see, looks like it's the it, it's detail padded. Is just absolutely yeah. gorgeous on it. We were looking at it earlier. Yeah. Lovely. And the grill here, gorgeous metal inserted grill. All the pipework either side of the of the driver, the um, the vents on the engine, the wire to the wheels. A classic racing car, uh, regardless of its age. I mean, even today, you know, if one of these was to be parked up at Silverstone on a Formula One day, it would be surrounded by people because it's just such an iconic racing car, and it is a beautiful model. Thoroughly recommend it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, on to something a little bit more sporty, but um, not in the league. But I just absolutely adore this. This is one of the latest releases by Oxford Diecast. It's about three pounds seventy-five. It's the Riley Kestrel. And as I say in my, um, in the, actually in the, in the notes, well done to Oxford Diecast for picking a car that it was made for a very short length of time. I think it was about two years that they made this particular Kestrel. Um, it's gorgeous gloss finish, uh, nicely detailed at 176. I absolutely adore the uh, the red wheels uh, that they've added to it. Prototypical. Um, yes, okay, some of the details are, are perhaps not as much as you get on a 143rd, but for this price, I think the shape. It just reminds me of the old Tootsie Toys and Dinky Toys pre-war toys. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely shape as well. Really classic, I think that mm. one. Um, a real and for such a small um, scale, they've managed to pack a lot of detail in. Yeah. I think. I said the paintwork is actually rather better than the. Um, it is actually. Than on the minority. It is well done for Oxford Diecast. Mm. It's a beaut. Recommend it. Now I'm going to move swiftly on to this one. This is. Uh, I'm very. I love the old Formula One. This mm -hmm. is. Uh, uh, this is James Hunt's uh, M24. Yes, it is. Yes, McLaren Ford M23. M23. Yeah. It scores highly for me for some several reasons. Number one, it looks great. It's very well made. But they've also, uh, engineering-wise, uh, gone one little step ahead, which I which I think is great. It, it, both pieces here can be removed, so you get a full view of Mr. Hunt and the engine. Looking like this, it looks more like a go-kart, um, which I think, <laughs> in engineering terms, they kind of were, really. They were sort of point and squirt and, and not much in the way of technology. Well, that's right, obviously, Dom, and also the all-aluminium tub. But, I mean, yeah. that car was one of the most successful Formula One cars of the modern era um, and really established the way that, that Formula One cars were going to go. But the M23 McLaren, I suppose, really put McLaren on the map. Um, when you think about it, and built them into what they are today. But uh, as you said, the detail in that's superb. I mean, even down to the sort of bib around James's helmet, which they don't have now, the Nomex bib and so forth, but which was very much de rigueur at the time. Yeah. Um, but the detail and so on, that is just lovely. The Cosworth DFE and the anti-roll bars and so forth, beautiful. Yeah, you see why I asked Graham to come along and I get his advice, because he knows everything here. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I think it's also very good value at thirty two ninety nine. And, uh, well, if Graham likes it and I like it, well, I think it's gorgeous. Love it, it is. Love it. Absolutely lovely, that. It's a beautiful little model. I'm just going to put those bits to one side mm -hmm. for a second. And uh, move on to, well, it's a personal favourite from my childhood. Um, not that I ever had one. Indeed, my father had one. But this is the Lamborghini Mura. Uh, this is the S version, the sports version, and uh, it's by Kyosho. It is expensive. It's £89.99, uh, so it is quite an investment piece. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got fantastic steering into it. This is one of the things I always find with 118th scale model cars, that um, they put steering in, and then you find it sort of vaguely steers. It steers a little bit, and I'm just thinking, well, that's not prototypical, so why bother even putting it in if it doesn't work? But uh, Kyosho have done some lovely work with I could just point it this way you can see the engine detail here which extends underneath as well they've also kept to the prototype as well not just putting on the S badge which of course is what you would expect but also inside I, can't, I don't know if you can really see that but inside that steering wheel if I remember rightly was uh, it was black leather as opposed to wood which was on the standard mirror so they've taken note of the differences in interior as well as also the performance differences. You've got a little opening boot back here as well, which is a bit stiff. I'm going to leave that alone. And the pop-up lamps, I don't know if they put a little button. Do they really pop, -up, pop up? Well, they do. If I sort of <laughs> oh, quite, yeah. if I tweak them, the lamps pop yeah. up. But it's beautifully made. 
it's beautifully finished. It has full suspension all round, which uh, for uh, one eighteenth is not always you know familiar, not always usual. But for this price, you're getting a fantastic model. I think it probably reflects on the fact that many consider that to have been probably the most beautiful Lamborghini ever <laughs> made, I and some do. the most beautiful GT, yes, if you like, ever absolutely. made. Um, so I guess the model price kind of reflects that. Uh, that is absolutely. a gorgeous model. And not many of of the S were made. No, indeed, and indeed all the mirrors full stop. And of course, whether I don't think it was an S, it might have been in the Italian job, which is the one that comes to <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, Ended up at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. Yes, yes, poor thing. After a little shunt in the in the in the tunnel. Uh, moving on, last to uh, Ixo. Uh, this is the um, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9, which is from the Australia Rally 2009. But there's a whole series of these. I'll just pick this as just one example. I think um, at the moment, if you're a World Rally Championship fan and you're going to go for Ixo, then you're really, really getting a, a, a good deal because a lot of the Formula One models being made at the moment are rather expensive. This is 27.99. The amount of detail is superb. The roll cage, the interior, the special gear shift, the, the, the linkage, it's all there. It's beautifully decorated. Uh, fantastic little model for 27.99. I mean, you couldn't do better than that. Yeah, what do you think? Well, again, we were looking at that earlier, and I, I think it is a beaut. Um, I mean, we're up to Evo 10 now, yeah. um, that they're actually running in Group N spec and so forth. Yeah. But uh, the detail, as you said on this, for the price, is just superb. Uh, and if you're into collecting rally cars and things, I think you'd be uh, hard-pressed to miss this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the amount of detail they packed in is just excellent. Yeah. And Ixo seem to be doing the whole season of World Rally Championship vehicles. They've got Citroëns, Peugeots, Fords. So you've got a, you can get a whole collection of 2009 World Ch Rally Championship lineup. Um, I don't know if they've done every single vehicle, okay. but uh, they've done a lot of them, and all at that price and all really good value. Yeah, looks looks good. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Well, look, that's about wrapped it up for the November blog. Thank you so much for watching as ever. Don't forget the magazine is already out now, so do enjoy it, and we'll see you for the December issue. Bye.